Somebody else says, when is it mandatory for the school district to set up IEPs? Nothing has been scheduled yet. In SoCal, in SoCal school starts the 24th. Shouldn't these have been done over the summer? I have asked when it would be. All I was told was that they are still training staff on new programs that are for that are meant for uh, the SPED students, not just Zoom this time. Well, the question is, when did you ask for the IEP meeting? And well, if you haven't asked for it, if you have, if you asked for it, if you asked before school closed, they have to do it within the first 30 days of September. If you're just asking for it now, it'll be more or less the same time frame. But I mean, I've already said on the show that certain districts said they were doing IEPs for all their kids in September. I think a lot of districts are shining that on, but I'm thinking long and hard in every case I have about why, if I don't think I need to do an IEP, why is that? So I think if you feel like you need an IEP, irrespective of when they're gonna do it, you know, write them a letter, tell them why it's necessary, tell them why it can't wait, tell them the bad things that happened during school closure that you're trying to rectify before the school year gets off to a bad start. Um, that's what I'm recommending. Now, I, think, I think we all sort of hoped, Bonnie, that they were going to spend the summer and get their ducks in a row. Yeah. And I think, I think there's disappointment all around that, you know, I think everybody was still sort of straddling the fence and not knowing we have, we've heard of school districts that had a plan last week that they were going to go back with masks and this week they've decided to do distance learning. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just slightly better than it was in March when they had 24 hours notice mm -hmm. that they were going to be doing distance learning. It's, it's hard as a parent. Um, and I'm sure it's so hard for the teachers. I'm hearing from teachers all over the place about their fear of their lives um, that they don't have a clear directive about where and when they're teaching. It's, it's a mess already. Hey, let me say something that I think might even be slightly balanced in terms of perspective. Okay. I, I am very disappointed and I think the districts could have done better during school closure and I think that they still should. But I also think that there's a legitimate health and safety consideration that we're also trying to balance and you know as somebody who's married to a teacher who's older and has had some health problems i've been very concerned about him going back on campus yes so, but I, I i agree with you i just i think a lot of us thought they should have spent the summer figuring yeah, I, out i don't know what they spent the summer doing i think that people in special ed are so overwhelmed and burnt out all the time that maybe even though they wanted to use their downtime productively maybe they just couldn't i don't know the, the know. point is this is going to be a slog and we're going to have to slog our way through it and if you want something different than is being served up to to you know the nice people that just take what they're given you're going to have to individualize and you're going to have to do a case to get your comp ed it's that simple. They're yes. not going to hand it to you. It's very obvious. If that were going to happen, it would have happened by now. And she uh, wrote back in and said she requested the IEP two weeks ago. Okay, well, they so, have another two weeks. They get 30 days. They have to hold it within 30 days, assuming that it's asked for during school, school being open, right? But you said with your first comment that some of the pushback is that they're saying if the school is only doing distance learning that they're not counting that as the school being That's open. the position that an attorney in Northern California is taking. Wow. That but is I don't just... know that that's, I don't know that that's, I don't think that's true across the board because I had an IEP last week and I have one this week. Uh, they are taking attendance this year. So mm -hmm. be aware that you know, that one of the ways they're gonna fight back is say, well, you were never there. How can you be complaining about it? Um, also, if you're having a problem with, you know, given your technology set up or the way your child learns or anything else, if, if you're having trouble accessing the assignments through the computer, ask for what's called a non-digital learning packet. Ask them to provide you I mean, that's old school, but, but you know, important to mention. Um, there's no consistent policy on whether districts are going to do virtual testing. There's no, there's no policy yet on whether they're gonna allow Zoom observations as classroom observations. That's all gotta sort of flesh itself out. Um, 
The other thing that some parents are doing, it's just worth you knowing this, is they're actually going to their insurance in California and saying, I'm not getting my school hours. This is really bad. My child is regressing. Here's my regression data. I need more ABA hours. I need you to cover my school day as well. So those are and, some- And are they getting traction? That's the big question. We're just starting. Yeah. We don't know. I mean, I've Keep got- Keep us posted. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, this, this person did all the right things. She got a letter from her pediatrician. She got a letter from her behavioral agency. She got a letter from an outside psychologist documenting the regression. Um, I'm told that you have to show that the failure to provide the service for the insurance side of things is that you can show kind of irreparable harm. So um, assuming that regression and losing ground behaviorally is um, irreparable harm, which is what this attorney felt that, you know, it would meet the definition, then that may be something else you need to look into. Parents are also now going to the district and, and making the case that they should be allowed to have their ABA services in home and other services like speech and whatnot. And I'm telling them, make your request, but be prepared for the fact that you're not going to get it without a fight. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at. And that's where we're at. Uh, it's a crazy, crazy time. And, and I think, you know, I, I was saying before that I, everybody had all these questions and now everybody's sort of stuck in this place of, we don't quite know fish or fowl at this point. And I think in the next couple of weeks, as people go back to school, I'm going to have questions. I think a lot of people are going to have questions. I want to encourage everybody to write in specifically uh, questions for Bonnie. Try to get them to me during the week so that I can get them to her before the weekend. And, um, and let us know specifics. Like if the individual has a, a diagnosis, what area of the world the school district is, what they've offered you, what you asked them. Is there anything else that's helpful for you to know, Bonnie? Age of child. Age, yeah. Uh, does the functionality of the individual particularly, do you need to know that or is that not as I important? It's always helpful. Okay. You know, well, but I mean, you're going to have lots of questions. We're going to have lots of questions, but we will work through them together. And, and that's the, the other yeah. stuff that I, that I wanted to share on the air, but I couldn't was some stuff about how school psychologists should be asking themselves to function during school closure and something on implementing the uh, behavior support plans when schools close. So I will send those to you, Shannon, and you can share them. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.